What's going on guys? Today we're working on a micro SD card. It's the second card that that client sent me and the story behind this whole recovery is beautiful. Uh, they walked uh, from coast to coast at the end of the uh, journey. A marriage proposal was made. So I can't even imagine the devastation that uh, the owners of this card went through when they found out that the card doesn't work anymore and they lost all that footage. When I received that card originally back in 2018, I had no options of developing custom schematics for micro SD cards. So unless there was a schematic that already existed, um, I would not be able to wire it up. So I have like a bin of uh, projects that currently are not possible to solve for one reason or the other. And every now and then when new updates come around, I revisit that box and I check what is in there versus what had changed in the industry and whether I can address these cases. Uh, so that case was there and then I'm like, okay, well, I haven't looked at it for a long time. Let's check if the schematics are available. And uh, yeah, luckily for them, the schematics were available. I had that card wired up real quick and the data was produced. He was so relieved. The relieved does not really describe the word because he had no idea that I kept on working on it. And um, with so much time passing, I think like you kind of make your peace with the content that is unrecoverable and you forget about it. But I reached out to him and I said, listen, I, I, I finally can get it done for you. Do you still need it? He was blown away that uh, I kept it all these years. And um, he is like, yeah, dude, I really do want it. And please do your best to get it back. So as usual, I'll uh, guide you through the steps that I take to get content recovered from units like this. Um, the goal is to um, take it one step at a time and you start off with something very easy and move up. Um, if that option <laughs> does not succeed, you move up to something more difficult. So the very first step that I always take is uh, a verification of the uh, um, short on the bar plane. If it's short to ground, then the recovery isn't going to be uh, easy by any means. Uh, we would need to know where the short is in order to eliminate it. Uh, so to do this, the easiest way to set up your uh, multimeter to dial test mode and if there is a short, it's going to make this beep. If there is no short, you're not going to hear any beeps, so you're going to get a reading instead. And you're going to test two taller pins on the interface. I get a reading of 0 0.430, which tells me that there is no short and we're uh, ready to take it to the next step. PC3000 flash comes with this uh, very convenient uh, um, flash card adapter that does have a micro SD slot uh, positioned right on it. We can plug this in and by switching over to the uh, uh, software side of things, we can uh, power up the device. From what I can tell, the card isn't initializing. As you can see the here, uh, the easy access to the card is not an option for us. So we can close this task for now. So that's where all easy steps are exhausted, <laughs> unfortunately. So the next step would be is to strip the back of that card to the copper. And that circuitry that we expose will later show us how a NAND protocol connection can be established. Fiberglass scratch pen in a small little tray. And I'm just going to start sending away the uh, surface to expose uh, the circuit underneath it. Then we're going to need an adapter like this to which we tape our card. We're going to make connections between the card and a specific signal that is on this card to appropriate signal connection on the adapter. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the fume extraction.
So now we're gonna create a task. Instead of using SD card adapter, we're gonna select PC3000 flash. This is a no name ID. And we get the idea of this thing. That's strange. Okay, so it's uh, reading the same thing. All right, so now we should have a proper read. There should be two, two C signals, not three. It's down to 165. Um, it's getting very hard to read out more than what it has already so having uh, about equal amount in both parts I'm gonna say that uh, that's what I'm gonna draw the line for now um, let me go ahead and uh, locate XOR for it We're going to accept automatic page transformation for it. All of our file system stuff is here. I'm going to push it to the left. Actually, no. First element. Since only a small files open up, that means uh, page structure inside of the block is good, but the blocks are not mixed together completely. Add the interleaf, compare the service area for them. It should look similar if there is interleaf involved and from based on what I see here it looks very similar. So we should be on the, um, on the right page here. Uh, same thing, raw recovery, run it. I'll find some bigger sized uh, JPEG files to open up. But the consistency is good even if they are small you can see that pretty much all of them are lining up except for for this one but I wouldn't be worried about that too much we still have a lot of bad sectors in here so um, that may have something to do with it uh, well, let's merge these uh, so there's no more further mix I suppose um, preparation joined by dumps and we're gonna build this PC3000 has a very convenient way of uh, logical image assembly that allows building file systems within seconds now that our file system is built we can go back to error correction and try different configurations on our chip to see if we can improve the read after trying different configurations, I was finally able to locate a setting that worked absolutely best for this chip and we got zero bad sectors left. Save the data for the client, notify them of a good news and I thank you guys for taking your time and watch this presentation. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.